it's always glasses. You know, people who have glasses know that they always, for whatever reason, you could be as, as careful as possible, your glasses always get smudged. And it's just something you have to deal with. Welcome back, everyone. And it is great to be back here on YouTube yet again. <laughs> I know it has been some time since I've been back on here. And really, the only thing is that I'm sorry. <laughs> Things get in the way. As someone who is not a full-time YouTuber, I do have to put this on hold when life gets in the way or family work. So I apologize for that, but I'm here now. And so let's get into it. So as some of you may or may not know, I did do a live build back in April and that was a lot of fun. And I wanted to thank everybody who came out and joined me on that live stream. Um, I think everybody had a lot of good fun and while building, answering some questions. So it was a lot of fun for me and hopefully for you as well. Now with this build, it was a lot of fun because I got to really actually plan out what I wanted to put in this machine, as opposed to my last rig. Now there's nothing against my old computer. In fact, it's still a champ and it serves a purpose. It's actually in the other room, still working, doing its thing. But I really didn't pick the parts on that machine based on aesthetics. A budget really kind of affected what I could and couldn't put into that machine. This one gave me a chance to actually pick and choose a centralized theme, as well as look at some of the integrations and some of the tips and tricks that I learned while building my other computer. And I wanna share that with you today in this video. All right, so the first bit of advice that I can give you is plan out your build. Now, somewhere on the screen, you'll see the parts of my old computer build. I'll have a picture and, and just the parts list and everything over here. But what I can definitely tell you is that planning out your machine can save you a ton of headache. A lot of the main retailers have PC builders on hand for you to use. Things like PC Part Picker, Newegg has a PC build list, and Micro Center does as well. And it's important to not just stick with one, I recommend using multiple ones. That way you have kind of a, a, a list view of all the different parts that are out there, as well as the prices, because prices will fluctuate a lot. I think. On some of the parts on this one, I saw a swing of maybe 30 to $60 at, at some times. And so it's really important to, to have all these different lists together so that you can price accordingly and make sure that you get the best deal. Component compatibility and availability. It's important to know these things because you need to know what fits with what and what is available to you. So you wanna know, well, do I wanna go AMD or do I wanna go Intel? Well, what are the different socket types that go with each one? Uh, what, what computer processor supports which memory? There's all kinds of things out there that can get very, very confusing, but there are a lot of resources out there that will help you identify what it is you need. I present to you the internet. Things that you don't want to get stuck with is an older standard. One of my friends, his computer only supports DDR3 memory and AMD's AM3 Plus socket. So there's a lot of limitations that he has where he can't play certain video games because they require a much newer socket. So that's part of the reason why he's looking at me to build him a new computer, which if you want to see that, subscribe, and I'll have those parts and all of those reviews out later on when I do that. But as I said, it's important to know all of these different standards that are out there. That way it helps you choose the best computer components for the best price. And like I said, there's a ton of resources out there and PC builder guides that will help you determine the best standard for you. All right, so another key piece of advice that I did overlook on my last build was plan out your accessories. This is probably really important because you don't think about this enough. You look at your computer like, oh man, it looks great, it's awesome, it's got this great processor, great board, but what you end up having is like maybe four USBs on the back when you need eight or nine or something like that. Or maybe you do have a board that can support eight or nine USB ports on the back, but your processor can't handle it because you decided to go with a cheaper processor rather than getting one that could handle that traffic. So it's really important to know what you have connected and even think about things that you're connecting into the future. Let's say that you want to get a racing steering wheel or a, a HOTAS key, you know, control stick for you know Star Citizen or flight simulators or things like that. These are things that you need to consider when building your computer because trust me, when it happens, it is so aggravating when one of your USB devices disconnects randomly. It's, uh, it, it really kind of threw me for a loop once it started happening. So again, make sure that you do plan for your accessories on your computer. All right, so this next one is a little bit of a personal preference, 
But for me, it is something that I ran into on my old computer, and that's RGB software integration. Now, for some of you, this may not be a problem because you may choose to do a non-RGB computer, which is perfectly fine. For me, I do like having the lights inside of the computer because certain times of the year, I do like to kind of customize my computer to look a certain way. So for me, RGB is kind of important. But as I said, there's a lot to consider when you want to put lights in or any kind of RGB inside of your machine because there's not really a standard when it comes to all of the different components. There are a few different manufacturers that have their own integrated software. Um, Corsair has IQ, Asus I think has the Aura Sync, and then MSI has Mystic Light. And there's a few others out there as well. But the thing is a lot of these don't talk with one another. So on my old computer, I had several different components that were controlled with several different software uh, apps that I really didn't like. So. One of the things that I decided to go with was, hey, I'm gonna have one piece of software to control the lights in my computer. And I decided to go with Corsair because I think their IQ system is in my opinion, pretty good and superior above all the rest. Now there are some others that people, like I said, um, Asus is Aura Sync and MSI Mystic Light. I think Lee and Lee has their, their kind of uh, software integration. But for me, I chose IQ because I like the software better than all the others. All right, so with all these quick tips in mind, um, I decided to go with the following components and I'll break these down very quickly. For some of these, I do have videos that I'll, I'll kind of put links in, in over here um, where I did do some unboxings and some first impressions. So if you are interested in, in kind of going into a deeper dive, I do have videos on those. All right, so hopefully you do enjoy those tips that I gave you going into this build. So let's go right into the different components that I chose and why I chose them. So my old case was the Fantex P400, and this is a great case. It's got built-in RGB, can support a number of different motherboards, and has plenty of space to put in a liquid reservoir if you decide to do water cooling or anything like that. The problem that I found is that the front air intake was a bit restricted because of the big front panel that goes on the front of it. The other issue that I had was with the RGB. Although it's great, it's a manually controlled RGB meaning that there is a button that you have to press at the top, and it's also in a very obscure place to put this button. So I didn't really like it that much. So going off what I knew I wanted, I chose the 5000D Airflow. It's better at regulating the temperatures with the mesh design and has the built-in Commander Pro unit built in. This will help me better control all of the lights that I'm gonna put in the machine with the IQ software. It also is a bit of a bigger case than my Fantex, and sported one more USB port in the front with an additional USB-C, which has been really nice to have. So next up is the motherboard. The MSI Gaming Pro Carbon X370 was a great board in my old machine and had built-in RGB, but the software to control it was a bit clunky and it didn't integrate well with the other RGB systems. The board would have supported AMD's 5000 series processors with a BIOS update, but since I was building a new machine, I knew that I wanted to start fresh. Since I had a good experience with MSI, I chose to stay with them for this build as well. And I went with the MSI Mag Tomahawk B760. This board supports enough USB and memory for my needs without breaking the bank. I do plan on possibly upgrading down the road, but for now, this board has suited me fine. I've not had any USB disconnects, and with the onboard Wi-Fi 6E, connection speeds have been fantastic. Next up is the processor. My old computer had an AMD 1700X Ryzen first generation. Now, this processor was fantastic, and it still is. I still really like this processor. Although some of the newer games don't support it, I still think it's a great unit to have if you can get your hands on it. With that said, I knew that I wanted to kind of take the plunge into Team Blue and see what they had. And I didn't want to spend too much money at the time of building the machine and going through all this. The 14th generation processors were not on the market. And the 13th generation were still pretty hot. I've read things about the 13900 causing heat issues because it ran so hot. And I really didn't want that. I mean, I think all of the 13th generation processors were very power hungry. So I decided to go back a generation and choose the 12700K. In my opinion, it has been a beast of a processor. It hasn't gotten very hot, it doesn't draw that much power to it, and it has the performance that I need. With this processor, it has eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now, what that means is that it has 
dedicated cores for performance and gaming, and then the efficiency cores handle kind of all the background stuff. Overall, it has about 20 threads of processing, which makes this component very, very fast. This processor has been able to handle pretty much everything that I've thrown at it, and I love it. It maintains great temperatures and delivers the performance that I was looking for. Now, storage was pretty easy. My old computer had a 256 SATA SSD when I first built it, and I had upgraded it over and over again, as well as other HDD, like standard disk drives and stuff like that. So I wanted to have something that had a little bit more storage and a little bit more speed. So I went with the Western Digital NVMe 2280 one terabyte drive. Now in the future, I do plan on installing more storage. So make sure that you like and comment if you wanna see a video of me upgrading that later on down the road. Okay, so memory was a little bit of a crossroads for me. So my old computer had some Corsair Vengeance RGB memory modules, and they were rated for about 3000 megahertz. But because I didn't do a BIOS update on my old motherboard, I never saw those speeds. I think I maxed out at about 2660, which at the time they was still doing all of the tasks that I needed it to do. But I know that I could have done a lot better looking back on the build. I went with the Corsair Vengeance Pro SL models, which these are a little bit of an updated version. And they kind of have these little triangles built into them, which I guess is Corsair's overall theme. There seems to be triangles on everything that they put, like the case, the water pump, and the power supply all have these little triangles. So it was nice to have kind of an overall aesthetic to it. But again, I'm happy with these. These are rated for 3200 megahertz, and I am seeing those speeds in my computer. So um, I know that I'm getting the full potential of these, and they've been great. They've been able to handle everything that I've thrown at them with no issue. Graphics card. This one took me quite a while to decide upon especially because the brand that I kind of am loyal to and that I really do prefer stopped making cards. That would be EVGA. If they had a graphics card that they were making for the 40 series, I would have gone with them in a heartbeat because my old card was the EVGA 1080 super clock and I loved it. I loved this card. But again, they had a falling out with the GPU market and so I had to decide what manufacturer I wanted to go with. Since my board was an MSI and I kind of wanted to keep all the things relatively the same, I decided to go with the MSI 4070 Ti Gaming X Trio. This is a big step up from the old card. Again, that was an NVIDIA 1080 from EVGA super clock. That card was a beast, don't get me wrong. Like it, it was a champ and it's still going and it could probably hold its own for a lot of top tier games, but this is a huge upgrade for me. Although I wanted to go with the 4080, it just wasn't in the budget because the graphic card prices are still very high. And, and although the crypto crash did happen, it did help a little bit. Again, it was just out of my budget to go with the full 4080. Now, the other contender that I did think about for just a second was Intel Arc. But for that, I didn't want to go through the problems and troubleshooting steps because they do have performance that is very similar to both AMD and NVIDIA. But the problem is, is that usually when they push out updates, there's some glitches that you kind of have to work out. So you kind of have to be on top of that. And you're, you're on the bleeding edge of, of that technology, but it's not something that was worth it for me to put up with. I just decided to stay with Team Green and go with NVIDIA. Overall, this card has been amazing and I've been happy with it. And although I do think that it is a bit overpriced, I'm still happy. Next up is the power supply. Based on the components that I was choosing, I knew that I had to have at least 850 watts. I also knew that since I was going with an overall theme at this point, that it was gonna be a Corsair power supply. My old power supply was a Thermaltake 750 with a manually controlled RGB switch, um, which honestly looking back, I never really used, but the selling points on the Corsair was that one, it came with the new NVIDIA uh, I guess it's type five or whatever they call it, power connector. I don't understand why they went with it, but this already had that built-in cable. And so I wouldn't have the need for a splitter or anything like that. It was also PCIe 5.0 ready. So if there's any kind of upgrades to the board later on down the road, and I decide to get a board that supports PCIe 5.0, this power supply is ready. The other thing too, is I knew that it had to be modular, which this is. And also this kind of has this new gimmick where the connectors are on the side rather than behind it. Now this made 
cable management really easy. And so I'm really glad that I went with this power supply because routing these cables in the back was super easy for me, especially with all of the cables from the fans and everything like that. It really did make a difference when it came to cable management. So since I went with the bigger case, I knew that I could afford to put in the bigger rad. And so I went with the Corsair Capellex H150i. This is the full 360 radiator. I didn't go with the LCD screen because I did read some reviews that there are a lot of issues where it will glitch out and show like a, like an exclamation mark and stuff like that. So I opted not to go with that. I may upgrade that later on down the road because this does allow me to put that in there should I choose. But for now, I'm happy with just the standard uh, radiator cover on there. All right, so let's talk fans. I did know that I wanted to upgrade the fans as soon as I got this case. I think that the case itself came with the, I guess the lower tier fans from Corsair, as well as the radiator from the uh, Capellix radiator. And I decided to put in QL 120s. Now, again, this is before Corsair launched out their new link sync link whatever they call it series where you don't need all the different cables it's just like one uh, universal cable and they snap together i wish i had waited but honestly at the time of building this they were not available but later on down the road i may upgrade those because again that would save a ton of room in the back with cable management but we'll see there are also some other little things that i decided to get um after the fact one of those was like a GPU stand because I'll be honest, the GPU bracket that came with the MSI card was kind of trash. And I, I really didn't like how that either looked or it was kind of a pain to put on there. So I opted not to use the bracket that came with the, the MSI card, as well as some other things like a, a Corsair Strafe keyboard and a Dark Horse Star uh, Pro mouse, which you can actually see right here. Uh, those are the, the uh, uh, accessories that I chose with just to kind of go with that overall theme of Corsair and lighting and stuff like that. All right, so quick, I do wanna give a shout out to Micro Center for making the whole process of buying my components so easy. They price matched everything that I had in my new egg cart and all the different printouts that I had. Um, I had printouts from like um, Amazon, new egg, and all these different uh, places where I researched all the prices of my computer components and they price matched everything. I was able to walk out of the Micro Center store, everything in hand, and not wait on any shipping or anything like that. They had everything in their store that I had picked out. So thanks a lot to the Houston Micro Center store for making this shopping experience such a breeze. And no, this is not sponsored by Micro Center. That's just how great the overall experience that I had with them was. So again, thank you so much to the Houston Micro Center. Before we get into some of the numbers though, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe. I really kind of want to reach a milestone and get to at least a thousand subscribers. And if we are able to do that, I'll be sure to do something special for you guys at that video. So let's dive into the numbers. Starting off with Hogwarts Legacy, I set the settings to ultra with ray tracing on and the average FPS was about 46.8 with the highs at 63.9 and my 1% lows were about 8.7. Going down to high settings, I did gain frames with 63 frames on average with our 1% lows at 17.6. Turning off ray tracing, the numbers increased a little bit more. Ultra settings were at 97.3 and 1% lows at 17.6. Rounding off with the high settings with no ray tracing, saw an average FPS of 115.4 and our 1% lows at 47.6. All of these resolutions were at 1440p native, and I did throw in a 1080p result there at the end, so you can see the numbers really shot up, but overall, great performance on Hogwarts Legacy. Halo Infinite did run into small issues with the ultra settings. Most of that was from a glitch from Nvidia. They had some issues with their drivers, caching some weird memory inside of the card, so these numbers are a bit skewed. The ultra settings gave us an average FPS of about 112.2, and the high settings gave us around 123 average. Last but not least, running Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark gave us an average 81.18 frames and 131 max and 28 frames minimum. So there you go, the numbers on my gaming rig, what I chose, why I chose it, um, I'm not gonna tout that this is the end-all be-all gaming rig and that it's it's the, 
the best gaming rig of all time, but it suits my needs and it fit my budget. And honestly, I love it. That really should be how you feel about your particular gaming rig. You're probably gonna hear a whole bunch of people say, well, I've got the best this, I've got that, I've got this. You know what? It doesn't matter. As long as your computer makes you happy and you're happy with your build, that's all that matters. So finalizing this, the things that I love about this computer is, one is I love having just one centralized piece of software to control my RGB light. That has been fantastic for me. Like I don't have to go into three different softwares. I don't have to manually push buttons to change the colors on my computer. I can do it all with one click and I love it. The other thing too is it does run really quiet thanks to the water cooling. It's awesome. Like I, I really love having just the silentness of this computer. And I like having all the space inside of it. You know, I, I've, I've put some little figurines in there. Um, I probably might do some water cooling blocks later on down the road. I don't know. I, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of options here for expandability and stuff like that. Uh, but honestly, it has been incredibly, incredibly satisfying. Just some of the things that I would probably change, um, probably the Corsair lights with the, the link system, the cable management in the back, as I said, is kind of a nightmare. And um, I'm probably gonna expand the storage later on down the road. So again, like and subscribe if you wanna see that video. Comment what you would like to see in the future from this computer. You know, what upgrades should I do or what kind of modifications should I do? So make sure you comment that down below and let me know what you guys think. So with all of that said in mind, until next time guys, my name is Patrick and I love you and I'll see you around. Take care.